Hear ye, hear ye, gather round for another edition of Young Kings Wrestling featuring the JDF Memorial Sovereign Sound Board. As always, you can find us on most platforms streaming your favorite podcast episodes, including Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. If you're listening on the iTunes, leave us a review of the five-star kind. Subscribe to us on YouTube at YK Wrestling. Links to all the platforms and merchandise are available only at ykwrestling.com. Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, to the Knock a Few Buckingham Palace. As always, I am the Thespian TC Fontaine, aka TCF Baby. Please say the baby. Joined by King Reek, House of Havoc, first is his name. We, we're here. We're back. Yes, sir. Again. Yet again. We never disappoint you. Why am I still talking like this? I don't talk like this after that part. Welcome back, man. <laughs> it was good. We here with another one. Another one. Oh, and uh, yeah. And at some point in this show, I'm at to switch headphones. These ones kind of bugging out. So, uh, right. yeah. I'm 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 a grinning bear for the time being. But <laughs> hey, <laughs> uh, in the words of Bone Thugs and Harmony, it's the first of the month. Shout out to them. Shout mm-hmm. out to both us. Uh, I heard some something about Crazy Bone a few weeks ago. Said he was in the hospital. What? what? He said like, like something with his lungs. Like I don't know. I don't remember. But they, yeah, ain't heard nothing since then. So, no news is good news. Yeah, no news is always good news. And uh, talk a little bit about your parlay, right quick, Reek, while I switch my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm stressing. I'm stressing about my joint right now. Uh, now the first one, the first one, the first two I had, and I just said, hey, let me put something easy on both of them. And sure enough, they run the score up, and the running backs was going crazy. But of course, Tyreek Hill, nothing. They had him on clamps all day long. Mm-hmm. Couldn't get him out. It's like how, bro? Had to be Buffalo. Hey, it was a lot of film for Buffalo to watch <laughs> over the last week. I mean, after after that Denver shit, I'm like, yeah, I gotta do something. Just let you know how bad Denver is. They they was letting Justin Fields look like Peyton Manning. Listen, I'm telling you, like, if, they, if they, they, they won after that too. Yeah, I was about to say if they lost this game, I don't know, man. Poor Seth Rollins. You see his tweet? No. Oh, I know Seth. Seth in the car crying right now. Go go on Seth's Twitter right quick. I mean, go I mean, go go look and see how he reacted. To the Chicago Bears losing yet again. <laughs> oh shit! And of course, he said, "I hate football." Like he always says when the Bears lose, he goes and tweets, "I hate football." But this was a different type of "I hate football." <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh, he going through it. Yeah, <laughs> poor Seth. He snapped. <laughs> Man, might be going through it again later <laughs> this week. Look, I, we'll talk I, I more about that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad at him. Nah, somebody. Somebody got to lose jobs. Facts. Facts, yeah. Uh, but I do want to dedicate this episode. We are recording on the 1st of October. And I just want to dedicate this episode to the uh, victims and the survivors and the first responders of the uh, the Route 91 Harvest Festival shooting that happened here in Las Vegas on October 1st, 2017. Um, six years ago, the deadliest mass shooting in uh, Nevada history let alone Las Vegas, Uh, crazy, crazy time. Um, I was actually living near the Strip at this time. And Mm -hmm. I was, I'm going to tell y'all what happened. Like I was, I was reading the news article um, like late that night and I logged on to the article and there's this like breaking news ticker at the very top of the article. And it's like shooting in Las Vegas. So I'm thinking like, oh, it's just based upon my, uh you know 
algorithm yeah. and stuff because because of my locale and everything. So I'm thinking like, I mean, people shootings in Vegas all the time. I think somebody got shot at a Walmart or some like a uh, gas station, a little dispute. Right. I click on it and they say this shit happened on the strip, and it was a mass shooting, like a bunch of people who already reported died, and I I was just shocked. So, uh, mm-hmm. lived on the corner of uh the street that that leads down to the strip, like straight shot. Lived off the corner there, and it was so surreal. I went I went to go to the Seven Eleven just to go get me you know something to drink, some chips and shit. And it's so surreal. I've seen a whole motorcade of first responder vehicles, like ambulances, just speeding. Just it was the craziest shit I've ever. Like I was in the middle of walking, and I had to stop, and I'm just like frozen, just staring, seeing a legit motorcade. It was about five in a row, just. Heading to heading to a hospital that was in that direction, like it was a trauma center in that direction. So, um, crazy time. We we rallied, like the city, like rallied just off of that. It was so surreal, so just crazy, and yeah, it's not some shit you want to happen in your city, that's... especially when when you got family that's elsewhere and they can't get in contact with you because you sleep oh man that's the worst yeah it was it was it was bad bro so uh i woke up my phone was getting blown up (laughs) like four in the morning because you know we got the time difference and everything back home so right right r.i.p to those people uh shout out to the survivors shout out to the first responders being on their stuff shout out to the to the city that volunteered too like Gave mm-hmm. blood. I, I remember I donated blood. Uh, a lot of people needed blood, man. Uh, did. Yeah, it was a crazy time. I also want to dedicate this episode to Tupac. Shout out to Tupac. <laughs> yeah, man. Because uh, I mean, it was an open secret, not not much of a secret, but it was it was openly known by fans, hip hop fans, Tupac fans for the last twenty seven years about who was responsible. If you're not like a big Tupac or hip hop fan, you was probably thinking, oh, they need to find his killer. Like, everybody know who the killer was. <laughs> right. But like, you know, Keefy D, man's been snitching in interviews for years about how, you know, how he had involvement in it. Mm-mm-mm. So he got caught up. It is what it is. Uh-huh. Old niggas be snitching on themselves too. Right. Not just not just young cats to be snitching. Old niggas be snitching too. They want that clout too. They the worst ones, honestly. Man. Give a give an old nigga some internet, bro, and some attention. Bro, how, how how OJ how OJ win the case of the century and won't shut the fuck up about bro the, the, the snitching self snitching. This dude OJ wrote a book and said, "If I did it, here's how I would do it." Right. <laughs> shout out oh, to OJ man. though, because OJ OJ is the the only football analyst that I actually has some some trust to listen to. In this time and day and age, I did not see that coming. Killing me, man. I'm telling you, like he he was that one dude that black people. Oh, you, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You said you said OJ then, killing you. <laughs> but he was just that one black dude that the whole community was rallying around that day when they when he got off scot free, man. And he's just been embarrassing niggas ever since. <laughs> With the stupidest shit. I'm not black emoji. Oh. Shout out to OJ, though, man. man. Las Vegas legend. Facts. This man went to prison for stealing his own property. I was just about to say, <laughs> he went to jail for robbing yourself. Stupid ass. That's crazy. He was on that plaza. I'm going to oh. rob myself. Right. <laughs> Shout out to OJ. Oh <laughs> the juice. Facts. He- he was he the real juice. So, you know, we got shout out to Hoovy too. But mm-hmm. OJ the original juice. Facts. Hey man, let's get into this week in wrestling history. Uh happy birthdays this past week. Uh first to two Joshi legends, two Japanese women's wrestling legends. Asuka, the Empress, current uh no, she's not the champ no more. Former women's champion, Royal Rumble winner, 
Triple Crown, Grand Slam, all that stuff. Oscar, one of the greatest ever, greatest Japanese wrestler, maybe greatest Asian wrestler in WWE history. By far. Yeah. I I, I I'll get to it by now. And uh another Joshi legend, Aja Kong, black excellence too. She black. Did you know that? I did. I found out late, but yeah, I found out a few years ago. <laughs> Me too. Her name, her name Erica with a K. That's how you know she black. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Aja Kong. Uh Senor Dinero in the Blanco. Damian Priest. Shout out to my guy. Did I say that right? Let me know, Vince, if I said that right. Nero and El Banco. Yeah, that should be right. Let me know. Uh, Buddy Matthews had a birthday this past week. So did the Lethal Weapon, Steve Blackman. Uh, Kurt Angle's illegitimate son, Jason Jordan, was born on this day. And uh, Kurt was not around. He had no idea. You know, Kurt wasn't here. Nah, nah, he was, he was off. Yeah. You know, doing doing Olympic gold medal and shit, you know. Yeah, facts. Uh Jenny. Shout out to Jenny. Happy birthday to her. Tajiri. My God. I used to love playing with Tajiri on the game. We used to talk about we was talking about SmackDown vs. Raw last week. Oh, the way he used to do that kick, man. Man, the kick was cold. Snap the shit out of the side of somebody's head. You remember when he used to and there's there's a clip of him doing this uh to Jerry Lynn and ECW that I seen on Twitter not too long ago. But when he just started striking on you, just bop, 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 right. bop, kick you a couple times, hit you with some more strikes, bop, 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 bop. lightning. Like that was to Jerry was cold. And then he hit you with the tarantula. Nice. Green Yo. Man, great mood of going out to pay for these Japanese people spitting in folks' faces for real. <laughs> <laughs> Tajiri, the truth. Last time I saw Tajiri, he was in uh, MLW, winning belts in MLW. And that was like three years ago. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure he's still wrestling. Let me see when the last time Tajiri wrestled. Yeah, I did see something about that. I'm like, cause I didn't think he was still doing. I mean, not as fast, of course. No, of course. You want to know the last time Tajiri wrestled? When? This morning. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> he wrestled this morning. Or last night in Japan, rather. But yeah. Oh, it, damn. It Shout out to my man. Uh Candace LeRae had a birthday, as well as Candace Michelle. Uh, oh shit. Hold on. Happy birthday to Dragon Lee's brother Roosh. What happened to that boy? Oh man. Yo, where he you been know what's at? funny? Where he been I, I at, keep, Tony? I keep putting a list of people on there, and then as soon as I do, as soon as I be ready, like, okay, I'm going to get him this week, they show up on TV. Out of nowhere. Let's get me tight. Watch them show up now that we that we right. made that declaration. Especially since his brother been on all three shows mm-hmm. in WWE this week. You know yeah. Tony going to dust it off. Right. Hold on, let me get Roosh out of here real quick. So we might even see Andrade show up. <laughs> Never know. Never know. Uh, Cameron Grimes. Shout out to Cameron Grimes, my boy. Case in point. Hey, no, he he was, wasn't he just on SmackDown? That's what I'm saying. Like, I ain't seen him, and I was about to put him on there, and all of a sudden, oh, he got oh, a match yeah. tonight. He He's inconsistent with the appearances. He show up every now and again. Hmm. So, shout out to Cameron Grimes. <laughs> Hector Guerrero had a birthday this past week. Hector Guerrero, is he he not alive no more, is he? I don't think so. Well, he would have had a birthday this past week. Mm. It's Googleable. Let's see. No, Hector Guerrero is still living. Yeah, he is. He's 69. (laughs) Happy birthday to Hector Guerrero. (laughs) Today, actually. That's my guy. I remember he was in TNA. Was he? T- T- yeah, TNA brought him in like around the time Eddie was WWE champion. Hmm. Oh, okay. It was the same year. I know that much. And that's they that's were trying, they were trying brother, to capitalize. Right? Yeah, that's Eddie's brother. Okay. Yeah. Look just like him. He do. Like Damn. if if you see a picture of Hector Guerrero right now, that's probably what Eddie would be looking like. like he was just alike. Would have thought they was twins. 
Damn. Shout out to Hector. Uh, Curtis Axel. Shout out to him too. Happy birthday. Uh, happy birthday to Robert Stone and uh and Rico. You remember Rico? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Vegas legend right there. That was some funny shit. Rico. And then, you know, uh happy early birthday to my guy right here. King Reek. No birthday later, a couple couple days from now, you know. Thursday. Yeah. Just yeah. on the off chance that I go to the Aces game next week and we don't get to record. I'm going to tell you happy birthday. I, mean, I appreciate it. For sure. And uh, this week in wrestling history, uh, it's, it was deep. It was real deep. So let's get through this real quick. 1993 uh, was the first ECW show that was ever booked by Paul Heyman. It was uh, it was called NWA Blood Fest, uh, held on October 1st and October 2nd at the ECW Arena in Philadelphia. And, uh, man, it was a deep card. I'm going to just run off some names that was on this card, man. Uh, Pat Tanaka, Johnny Grunge, and Rocco Rock, the public enemy. The Sandman was on this card. Abdullah the Butcher, Terry Funk, Jimmy Snuka, Kevin Sullivan, Don Morocco. Uh, it was the ECW debuts of Sabu and Taz, and they faced each other in this match. And uh, in the main event of the first night, Terry Funk, defeated Jimmy Snuka in a cage match for the ECW TV championship. Yeah. And then uh, the second night, we got Tommy Dreamers on this card. More Terry Funk, more Sandman, more Taz. (laughs) (laughs) Kevin Sullivan, Shane Douglas. Yeah, it was pretty deep, man. Jimmy Snuka again. It was deep. It was a deep show. So Paul Heyman was uh, in his bag and, uh, Continues mm-hmm. to be in his bag to this day. So shout out to my man's uh, 1998 Zamboni Mania. Y'all remember that? Stone Cold oh, man. driving the Zamboni to the ring. Man, they just used to do any damn thing in the late and, 90s. Yeah, they, they had to, bro. They had to. Like, y'all want a bear truck? So go ahead and throw that shit in there. Y'all want to throw people in dumpsters? Go ahead. Don't nobody care. You got to get them to change the channel from TNT somehow. What 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 he call it? Um, what what was that shit he called it? In, uh, Crash TV. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Crash TV. That was that was what the nineties was. The nineties was nothing but Crash TV. Basically, Jerry Springer on it. Nineteen ninety nine. Genius facts. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of more Crash TV, uh, this week in nineteen ninety nine, this is your life, featuring The Rock and Mick Foley. <laughs> The highest rated segment in Raw history, maybe WWE history, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. 8.2, they say. 8 million people watch this one segment. 8 million. That's insane. And that's just in America. Was that was that the first time that uh, Rock said Poontang Pie? I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I want to say it. Shout out to Rock. It's a pie aficionado. Thanks. <laughs> 2000, uh, WWE Raw would uh, air for the last time on USA Network. Uh, they would debut on TNN on Spike TV. And they would leave uh, They would leave about five years later. Uh, more on that in a moment. But 2002, Kane defeats Chris Jericho on Raw to win the Intercontinental Championship. And uh, it is unified with the World Heavyweight title about three weeks later and retired about seven months, seven, eight months. And then Vince realized he was tripping and brought it back. They don't mention that it it was not a thing for about nine months. They never mentioned it. Right. Uh, Back to 2005, uh, back to what I was talking about. Monday Night Raw left USA Network in 2000 on a five-year deal. And uh, they returned to USA. Next week was homecoming. Yeah. It was actually two days from now. October 3rd, 05, if I remember correctly, was uh, the homecoming in USA Network. So they left Spike TV after five years uh, in 2005. And Spike TV, they needed to supplement their wrestling content. And so TNA Impact debuted on Spike TV this week. And they have aired 1,002 episodes of that. 
still airing episodes of Impact. <laughs> and y'all wonder why Spike TV is no more. Mm-hmm. Hey, Spike TV has some stuff on it, though. They did. You they remember uh, like... MXC? I never seen it, but I heard it was a show. MXC was, was uh, what's that damn show? I used to watch this show all the time. It came on ABC. It was like an obstacle course. John Cena, oh, uh, Wipeout. Yeah. Yeah, wipe yeah, out. yeah. MXC was the original Wipeout. Damn. Remember Joe Schmo show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to love me some Joe Schmo show. That shit was... Shout out to that. It was a lot of good stuff on Spike TV. It's like, they called it the man channel. I was about to say, all the shit that guys like to watch. Yeah. The stupid man TV shows, like, and some wrestling on there, too. So, shout out to them. Yeah. Uh, also, in 2005, CM Punk uh, debuted in OVW, had his first match uh, under his WWE contract. So, might not be his uh, last first WWE contract in match. I, I, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of dudes being real complimentary about him over in the Fed. All of a sudden, though, in, include including your goat. They uh. Oh they yeah, mean, Sean. I mean, Sean was like, I mean, well, I would not want him in NXT on my show. You know how many people gonna watch that shit? That's what Sean yeah. was saying. <laughs> like, he just said straight. He's like, Punk is a dude that moves the needle and draws numbers. Like, okay, right. That's all you need to know. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to fast forward all the way to 2020, just and I, I, any other week, I would not have mentioned this, but I, I feel like it's relevant to uh, something we're going to talk about later on today. Uh, first round of the uh, inaugur- inaugural, excuse me, Heritage Cup tournament uh, in 2020, Noam Dar defeated Alexander Wolf. And uh, of course, Noam Dar didn't win that tournament, uh, but. I only mention this because, ironically, Pete Dunne was a special guest referee for that match. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, very, very interesting. Very interesting. But uh, we'll talk more about Noam Dar and uh, formerly known as Pete Dunne here in a little bit. But I'm going to segue this over to my guy, Reek, for the Royal Address of Rumors. What do we got yeah. here? I heard uh, Jay Cargill officially signed with WWE this yeah, ESPN. They wouldn't let ESPN. us forget about it. <laughs> no, yeah, no, like no surprises, no breaking news, and no nothing like that. No uh, keeping it under the radar. No, they coming right out like, yo, ESPN. You can break the news and make it mainstream. Which I'm with that, honestly. Like mm-hmm. that 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 shows you that they they fully invested in making her that mainstream star. Which that's what she came there for. But uh, yeah, they they put it out to all the mainstream media, and it was just a week long thing. So I mean, we we full stream ahead with this. Like she is in the PC for at least a couple of weeks, but she I don't even think she's going to NXT. I think she's she's just going straight up to the main roster. She's going to get fine tuned in the PC, and uh, they'll guess they'll just debut her in the coming months at this point. Hey. What they need to do is redo it. Just redo it. This time on the big scale. Have Jay come out there, pop her shit, and then she just get interrupted. Somebody oh, asking Lord. her, who told oh, you it was oh, open Lord. mic night, bitch? Oh, my God. Cut the check, Nick. We, we ain't seen Brandy since, since she No, nah, Brandy says she Brandy says she done. She, she retired. She ain't wrestling no more. <laughs> I mean, she don't got to wrestle when, you know what I'm saying? You could, uh, you know what I'm saying? You could people, you could do the whole, if you know, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that. I'd be okay with it. Because it's a joke. It ain't, it ain't she being serious. Yeah, I, I'm with it. But let's, listen, Jade, they making a big deal out of this. And, and of course, hashtag you niggas mad as hell, mm-hmm. like always. Which is crazy. They They really making a big deal out of this because, like, Somebody got to. But no, it's, ain't it's, nobody it's, made a big deal out of Jay Cargill before. That's you know? what I'm saying. <laughs> and and, and, and I, I love the way the wave moves because when she was over there, it was like, 
oh, oh, I'm tired of seeing her, and she's not that not that big a star, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, ESPN comes out and said that WWE signed Jay Cargo. Oh, my God, this is so big. This is huge. And she's going to do this and that. Like, bro, come on, man. And that's the, the WWE side of hashtag you niggas. Yeah. I was doing that. Yeah. It's equal opportunity slander over here for, for hashtag you niggas. Always. Always. We, we got another the, shit, man. Uh, no, I ordered a big, big, big inventory the last time, so we good okay. for a minute. All I'm, right, I'm gonna order some more before New Year's, so we got a bunch in 2024. So, because we got to do one every week, yeah. <laughs> we got to do one so every week. Because I know, I know it's coming, I know it's coming, I feel it. Oh, yeah, 2024 is about to be disgusting. Woof, I already know. I mean, listen, if if the way if shit goes the way I think it's going to next month. Right, <laughs> it's, it's gonna get ugly. Not let let alone Survivor Series, but like shit, we got we got the Rumble coming up in a couple months. Like, which you know the Rumble starts the road to WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and that's when they really start acting up. So, facts. I was trying to be diplomatic and be nice, but it was just a bad business decision on my part to only order five. <laughs> So we we good. We stacked up for next year. So we're gonna be prepared. We're gonna be well prepared. For Christmas, we got a, a new pack for you niggas. Woo. That's what y'all got. <laughs> so somebody started a rumor, and I guess it was because of something that that uh Sean liked on, on Twitter that they started this whole thing about Triple H and Stephanie, like like they were divorced, they were separating. And, you know, people started getting into the rabbit hole and going to old pictures and footage of, you know, Triple H was, wasn't was wearing his ring at one point. And uh, they seen they seen Stephanie out somewhere. Like, it, it, just, it was just going on nonstop. But um, uh, one of these sites, they, like, they just went into all that and be like, listen, they, they, they there was nothing that indicates that they are anywhere towards separating and stuff like that. Like I think Stephanie had posted them doing fireworks outside their house and everything like that. Like they just they just being low key. Like Stephanie's living her life. She's being a mother. She's not in the company no more. Triple yeah. H is working. You know what I'm saying? He's the Aunt Han show now, basically. Like this just goes back to what we just said. Hashtag you niggas. <laughs> because I think Sean liked the tweet about some somebody said something about Steph not running the company because, you know, they're like, oh, because she wouldn't do this or whatever. So, something negative about Steph. Of course. And he liked it, which, mind you, and you should probably know this, too. Shawn, Shawn Michaels does, does not, not run his account. Exactly. Like, he got people on his Twitter. He got a, you know what a, saying? a block button trigger happy social media manager. <laughs> <laughs> that like, tweets things out for him. Right. So, like, y'all just, y'all do too much at all times. When you don't even know the whole like, yeah. I just, I just so, want to know: Do y'all consider like, do y'all consider the fact that these people have lives outside of work? Stephanie McMahon has been an executive in this company for twenty something years. Like, y'all don't think ooh. Steph want to take a break? Do y'all not consider the fact that Triple H and Stephanie's oldest daughter is a senior in high school this year? There you go. Damn, really? Yeah, we Jesus old, bro. Christ, <laughs> yo! I, I just like just the other day they came. I remember like the episode. <laughs> no, I remember the episode of Raw. Triple H was not on there because Steph was in labor. I remember watching that episode. Right. I'm like, yo, the hell? No, like, y'all, y'all not consider the fact that like maybe she want to be there for her daughter's senior year of high school, and and the rest of her daughters are you know in high school, starting high school soon. Y'all don't think she want to just be there for the most important development years of a of a kid's life as they transition into being an adult mm-hmm. while Triple H is the head of this company now? <laughs> like, somebody got to be there for them. Come on, fam. Jesus. Why you think AJ Styles ain't on SmackDown no more? His kid is senior and he played high school football. Like Right. Probably want to like be here for his kids. They, they said that hey, hey, they, they wrote that motherfucker off to go home early. <laughs> right. Like AJ Styles not trying to work Fridays while his son playing football. He don't want to miss his son's senior year of football. Exactly. He got they, family, they bro. 
Right. Hey, Georgia football right. is life out there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Y'all tripping, bro. Come on now. Yeah, man. Uh, well, we just talking about, you know, people showing up on TV, soon to be coming up. Uh, if you watch No Mercy, you saw a little vignette, which was actually kind of interesting because they, they, they aired it on through. Tuesday, too. Yeah, yeah. They, they uh, It was flipping through channels of, you know, some 90s TV. You saw WCW, you saw some old some, talk some shows. Some Bengals games from the yeah, 90s. Yeah, old Bengals games. Why are we showing old Bengals games on, on a vignette? I wonder why. Mm-hmm. Huh. And then we got all the way up to the present day and seeing some wrestling on TV now. And it closed out. With uh, a close up, you can see like the, somebody's chin, but then you see that that tiger shirt, and you know, of course, I've seen a tiger dude, shirt on a wrestler before. Yeah, yeah, old boy is from Ohio. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? From Cincy, Bengals fan, Mr. Brian Pillman Jr., who's been in the PC for a little while. It ain't been blasted on mainstream, but it's been known he's in the PC working, so he's gonna be debuting pretty soon. Hmm. We know uh, Brian Pillman uh, played for the Bengals for a little bit. Uh, had a few stints in the NFL. Um, oh, so. Yeah. Okay. Folks didn't know that. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, I just found out also that uh, him and him and uh, John Harbaugh were roommates in college. Damn, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Small world. Oh, yeah. This is like finding out Kevin James and Mick Foley were on the same wrestling team. <laughs> That's something that makes sense, though, which is crazy. There's an alternate reality where they, they switch legacies. Yeah, well, the yeah. funny thing is, is that it probably it probably work out because yeah. if you take if you take away their individual careers, they're probably the same person. Yeah. And I, I think uh Kevin James would be a good wrestler. Yeah. I've seen Kevin I've seen James him. in uh, that movie. Was it Becky? He would be a good ass heel. Yeah, yeah. I'm tired it's of seeing Kevin out. James face on my timeline too. Yeah, y'all are, I, I, y'all, y'all take y'all a meme and just run it go into the crazy. Ground. Like it, it was funny the first couple times, but it's been like a week now. We we, we yeah. can we can chill. Yeah, y'all you're tripping. doing too much. Y'all trip. <laughs> oh man. What other rumors we so, got? So 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 this is some funny shit. So uh. Arian, formerly known as Cameron Funkadactyl in WWE, mm-hmm. she did an interview. Uh, well, she's talking about, you know, just, you know, she is, uh, she was talking about, you know, her time with the Funkadactyls, with Brodus and Naomi. Uh, she said that, you know, she kind of has some unfinished business in WWE, you know, if the, oh. if the opportunity presents itself. Okay. But uh, right now, She's focusing on launching her own promotion. Mm-hmm. It's called Pound Town Wrestling. Yeah. Hey. yeah. hey. Ain't nobody trying to hear that bullshit, oh, man. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh All right, what's the next rumor? <laughs> <laughs> listen, oh, all, man. All, I got- listen, all all uh I don't even know what. Best of luck. Best of luck. <laughs> oh man! All right. Uh, so we saw Adam Cole uh, tweaking his ankle on TV because uh, he didn't know how to jump right. But uh, yeah, apparently it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be keeping him out for longer than expected. He's not gonna be on the show tonight. In fact, he needs ankle surgery, so uh, he's gonna be out for a little while. He had some. Uh, I think uh, Britt posted a little while ago. He had a pretty. It's a pretty significant break. It's broken like three places in his ankle. Yeah, ankle not yeah. even that big to begin with to be breaking in three places. Right. <laughs> so, so yeah, he 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 messed himself up. So yeah, Adam Cole be in the gym, bro. Do you train? I don't think I don't you don't look it. like it, and it's this an insane injury to be having. Yeah, I think he just be doing a lot of cardio because like he could do minutes, but yeah, yeah, nah, he's like. Look at dude, like and it's, what's crazy. He he must have done something because he used to be big. Like if you seen him like way way back in the day in the Indies, he was a little yeah. Ring of Honor, he, he had a little him. baby fat man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has a weight on him back. He then, got so, to the yeah, PC he, and got skinny. Right, he was he was going crazy with the cardio. That's what it was. Adam Cole don't lift. The boy needs to man. 
<laughs> he should. That, that's what he need to be doing when he go to rehab. Like when he start rehabbing, like just get in the gym, put some weight on, leg come days. back looking crazy. You just need more leg days, man. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Leg days. He needs some milk. All that. Nice. Yeah. Get well and soon. Last bro. thing. Last thing I got. Uh, Edge's contract is officially expired. I believe as of today. So I think uh, it's at the end of September. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, here we at the first, and of course, you know, that that creates a cycle for you niggas, because tonight, AEW has their uh, pay-per-view, Wrestle Dream, which overstuffed on steroids, full of matches. Yeah, we're going to talk about this, that. Yeah, from, from zero hour all the way on through the main card. So, yeah, all the speculation comes up that uh, Edge may show up sometime on the show. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Um but I don't know. We'll see. Christian is, you know, on on this card. He's facing Darby, the main so, event. Uh, yeah, if they no no no, I think uh, the uh, Brian Brian's in the main event with uh, Zack Sabre Jr. I, I heard some Brian Brian did an interview and he said he told Tony he don't want a main event no more. What? I don't know his reasoning, but I mean, if he don't want to, but then I, I've seen multiple accounts that uh, Christian and Darby supposed to be in the main event. Which makes sense, like it got a story to it a little bit. Yeah. And then, you know, you wanna sell people on that potential edge appearance. That's how you do it. I mean, I can see. And that. if Edge don't show up, well, good carny move. So, <laughs> win win. Well, he I mean he is step Brian is stepping back too, because I know uh, one of the things I, I didn't even talk about this last week, but he's uh he is gonna be stepping away from full time wrestling. As of he next should. year, as so he it's, should, it's a, right. It's about that time. Go take and care of your family, been, bro. He's been working backstage. I think Jr. talked about it. Uh, I think last week, where he said like Collision is Brian Danielson's show. So all y'all that said it was Punk show, eh, Punk might have sold it, but that's Brian Danielson's show. And you see, by the way, that people hey, are over yeah, there. Some of the matches they be having. The man. matches, the matches are fire. You know, what I'm saying the the booking looks good. You know what I'm saying? You don't hear about much drama over there, you know. Again, this comes on at the worst possible day. I'll be forgetting about collision. Like I had to I had to read an article uh from MJF earlier today to remember collision was on last night. Yeah. And I haven't seen collision in weeks. Me either. College, college football done started, and that's exactly right. what I was saying when I seen they was gonna have a Saturday show. I was like, man, college football started like a month after the show debuts. Yeah, man. How that's gonna work? Yeah, y'all, y'all not, not working well for me. And it gave me because because Collision is a damn good show. It is. So it's not like I'm trying to miss it, but damn it, y'all time uh, is bad. And especially last it. night when you had college football, the fight was on. No mercy. NXT, yeah. Like, eh, y'all gotta y'all gotta think about your, your schedule a little bit. Yeah, man. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just start DVRing it, setting a recorder. Thanks. And watching it later, cause I'll be forgetting it. Be so much good stuff on Saturday that I just don't think to watch it. But right. yeah, shout out to Collision, and uh, we're gonna talk about Wrestle Dream here in a little bit. Uh, but mm-hmm. first, let's talk about what we watched this past week, uh, wrestling wise. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that, but let's talk about this fight, <laughs> Canelo Alvarez, Jamel Charlo. Uh, they they marketed it as undisputed versus undisputed, but uh, you know one of one of Charlo's belts got stripped soon as soon as he got to the ring. So, right, I think it was a WBO. They be tripping. Yeah, yeah, they they bad with it. Honestly. Yeah, WBO be tripping. So they they stripped him of uh of his belt at one fifty four. So he got the other three. So he got to go get that other belt back if he want it back. But uh, this is for Canelo's. Four belts at 168. And uh man, this this fight was kind of disappointing, bro. Not because I lost money on it, because I definitely bet on a Canelo knockout. <laughs> Cause I mean, you got a dude going up two weight divisions. I'm think he's gonna get knocked out. Right. But it's not that like I, I've never really been a big fan of uh either Charlo twin, but more so Jamel. I've I've not been much of a fan of, but yeah, this this is a disappointing fight, bro. Yeah, I don't bro, think Charlo is. got that dog in him for real. 
What type not, of lion not, are you talking about? Yeah, you know I'm saying not not at that at that weight class. Like maybe maybe where you at, but uh jumping up to that ain't his division out. that much longer anyway. It, it's not. Arrow but, um, moved up, Bud moving up. Uh oh. He, he called out Bud at the end too. He was like, yeah. listen, I I'll fight Bud. Like, I don't know if you want that smoke. We're gonna find out. Oh, uh, hey, you remember yeah, nah, was... for Jose Benavidez? Yeah. That's exactly how he gonna do Jamel Charlo. Oh shit. When Bud don't like you, he, <laughs> he going there looking to, to beat the fuck out of you. He did that to Benavidez. He did that to Hank Lundy like 2015. So yeah, it's 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 not looking good for him. Uh all, man, he he ain't show no dog for real, man. He he won one round on my card. Yeah. And I think that was and like it, it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't even that crazy either. He was just he was just putting out the volume, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, it wasn't that, enough that, aggression, especially like in the later rounds, like especially, you know, you're back against the ropes and you just like you're not showing that dog. Like you 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 not you were showing fear to me, man. Even even Bud had to tell that man he was disappointed in him. Yeah, but, man. But I, this is how funny Bud is, because like he'll go just randomly whenever he don't like Charlie. Uh-huh. So he'll go yep. on Twitter and just like directly mention Charlo like a super villain, yep. like a disappointed super villain <laughs> every time. So yeah, I think yeah. we both got Bud beating Charlo if that ever comes. Oh to hell finish. yeah, uh, he, he he don't want to do that. He said nah. he do, but he don't want to do that. Nah, that that uh trainer of the year award for Derrick James last year is fake too. Oh man, <laughs> that shit fake as hell. I just seen the last three fights, last three fights uh, uh that he didn't train like, of course Spence, uh mm-hmm. AJ fought like a month ago. Yeah, and now this joint, yeah, it's looking real fake. Yeah, looking man. real fake. We don't believe you. We need more people. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say, man. It's just my opinion. It's just my opinion. On everything, I'll sit up there. I'll Might be a little bias like... on that too. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't even gonna lie. It's cool. There's <laughs> some bias there, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, what you uh, like as far as wrestling goes this past week? Uh, damn. I'm gonna let you go first. I got a surprise. I'm... Well, yeah, no, nah, I wasn't really. I ain't really outside of like the regular shows, but you know, I had to... I jumped out to you know catch my live wrestling. Over at Battlefield Pro. By the way, yeah. too, I gotta get well soon. Offer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a real serious note, um, I just took this little snippet from uh, the GoFundMe that was set up. Uh, I, I when I got to the show, one of the first people you usually see is Offer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because he he's going around, like, the show. you know, talking to people. Yeah, yeah. But you know, he goes around. He's a real good dude. He goes around, talks to you know the fans, stuff like that. He's always real grateful. Everybody that supports and stuff like that. So when I didn't see him, I had some questions. Um, but apparently the day before the show, he got rushed to the hospital. So there was supposed to be a whole angle that they was going to play out on the show. And, you know, they said that he was home. Uh, but he yeah, he got rushed to the hospital and with a, a severe cardiac issue. Mm. Uh, and, you know, he you know, did some tests and everything like that. And it, it reminded me of the whole Triple H thing because it said his heart injection fracture was only working at 35%. And he was having an issue with, you know, it was filling up with fluid. So, yeah, he's uh, he's really, you know, going through it. Uh, but he's home. He's, you know, he's rehabbing. So, you know, he ain't necessarily out the woods yet, but he's getting there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, prayers up to my guy in all seriousness. So he's a real good dude. Yeah, man. And he, he's put a lot of work in to put this. The shows are great. You know what I'm saying? So some I got I got some people I know that that are performing, you know, and some big names that that keep coming around there regularly. So it's it's a solid solid little production that they put together. So get well soon, my guy. You know what I'm saying? No news is good news, but you know. Oh, the ones up, man. Facts. Shout out to the Anuai family. Shout out to Alpha. Uh, it's yes, Alpha sir. Junior, by the way, yeah. not not a uh, not Alpha Senior. Yeah. Uh, Alpha Junior. Uh, former Alpha Senior as... was in the building though. He oh, was, was he? Nice, nice. So yeah, that 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 was good. Nice. Uh, this Alpha Junior, formerly known as Manu in Legacy, and yeah. uh, he was he was also uh, if you don't know, WrestleMania twenty five. Shawn oh. Michaels and Undertaker. He was the cameraman who uh, 
Ooh. took the bump from Undertaker. Actually, no, that was Sim Snooker. Was it Sim Snooker? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I've been told wrong my whole life. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was Snooker because uh, they said he almost got killed. And I'm like, who the, who yeah, the Taker. hell was that? Because Taker was about to snap. His, like, And they said it was a dude that used to be a performer. I'm like, who the hell was that? It was, uh, he was Domino. Deuce? Yeah, Domino. Okay. It was one yeah, of the Domino. Two. Yeah. I couldn't stand Deuce and Domino, too. Hated that gimmick. I honestly, I was rock. The, at first, I didn't like it, but then it's I like I think I would like it now. Me. But like, I like yeah. Cherry. I just didn't like them. Yeah, yeah. It grew on me after a while. I was like, okay, all right. You know, got grease going on. Okay, that's cool. That was mainly why. Yeah, <laughs> you get a 1950s gimmick, and you got a black dude watching. You just eh. right, right. The 1950s <laughs> weren't kind to black people. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, once once they started like really getting into like the matches they had with London and Kendrick, I was like, Oh yeah, them okay. those those were yeah, right. I might have to go around some yeah. of those back too. Right, right. Like y'all, y'all sold me on that. London and Kendrick were ill too. That was my favorite. Yeah. They was cold. I wanted to be like them. I wish I could have hung out with them. I'm telling they you, like, I cool. didn't care. I didn't care that much for tag team wrestling in like Ruthless Aggression era, but watching them too, I yeah. was like, Okay. They were the original MSK. Yes. Same uh, same hobbies and everything. Mm. <laughs> some, some if you know, you know. You can tell. <laughs> yeah. You can tell. Uh, what I watched this past week, I just I just threw on the uh the live WWE channel on Peacock, which is what I do when I can't decide what I want to watch on there. I just throw on the live channel. I don't know if y'all knew about that, but they do have a whole section of live uh channels on Peacock. And uh, they got a WWE one. They got a Law and Order one. It's kind of like Pluto TV a bit. If y'all know what that is, same yeah. same deal. Uh, they got a channel where they play the Golden Girls all day long. So now, Pluto TV definitely push. watching that. <laughs> yeah, Pluto is free too, and uh, I think this right. uh, this this live uh, free live channels on Peacock are free as well because they they were definitely showing ads, which is why I turned it off. After a while, I was watching a turn on the live WWE channel a couple nights ago, and they had the best of Undertaker playing. So Ooh. I forget what match I turned it on, but they also aired uh, this this like the the very eight hour best of Undertaker playlist, right? Yeah. Um, they had Stone Cold and Taker from SummerSlam '98 was on that okay. list, uh, but but they eventually showed the one night stand match versus edge the uh the extreme rules yeah the latter or or the tlc yeah Yeah. it was a tlc match and uh if if undertaker lost he had to leave the wwe that was a stipulation and undertaker lost because a la familia was all throughout that match and there was was one crazy yeah and a la familia it was edge vicky guerrero uh chavo guerrero Mm -hmm. The uh the major brothers who would become the edge heads who would become known as uh Zach Ryder and uh Kurt Hawkins. Mm-hmm. They were all throughout there, but there was one individual in particular who came out there. He was actually the first person, he was in this group. Oh, what's his Chavo name? Guerrero's bodyguard, Bam yeah. Neely. There we go. Yeah, yeah. You remember, I remember Bam Neely. Face. I don't remember his name though. Yeah, yeah. Bam Neely. <laughs> What happened to that boy? Damn. I had to find out. I had to find out. I was like, yo, what happened to Bam Neely? Right. So uh, I did a, I did as much research as I could without it getting a, in the creep territory. Because I, I sort of really just did a my private investigator cosplay, but I, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he was a Chavo Guerrero's bodyguard in La Familia. He was only around maybe eight months, eight, nine months. Uh, yeah, had some heat. Apparently, got sent back down to developmental. Uh, was released in January 2009. From here, uh, it took about a year off from wrestling and uh, returned back to the Indies in February 2010. Was wrestling over the Indies, uh, won a vacant championship from a promotion called Steel Domain Wrestling in May 2010. Uh, you want to take a guess at who he beat for that? No idea. I ain't never heard of this promotion. Uh, yeah, me neither. It was some indie promotion. Uh, don't even remember where it was at. 
No, I don't remember. But uh, he defeated, at the time, reigning NWA World's Heavyweight Champion and now WWE official Adam Pierce. Scrap Daddy? Scrap Daddy Pierce. <laughs> That's crazy. That was in May of 2010 uh, when we graduated. Graduated high school in May of 2010. And uh, Bam Neely, Bam Neely had his last match in July of 2010. Has not wrestled since then. he retired. Damn. So now I'm trying to find out what happened to that boy. This is 13 years we're talking about. God, Unaccounted for. Couldn't find much. Uh, most most recent update on Bam Neely I've seen uh, coming from Chavo Guerrero's Instagram back in April of la- April 2021 rather. Mm-hmm. Uh. Ran into him, took a picture with him. Uh, I don't know where they were at. It it does not look like this place that Chavo <laughs> Guerrero was at. But uh-huh. I zoomed in because uh, Bam Neely, uh, real name was like Justin Justin Larouche or something like that. Uh, he, he had on a polo. He had a black polo, and it had a logo on it. So I zoomed in on the logo. And uh, I looked up the name of this establishment, and I just put two and two together. This man is working as a bouncer at a strip club in Tampa. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, nothing, nothing on him at all since this Chavo Guerrero post. Uh, usually, usually it goes the other way around. Right. <laughs> right. So, uh, come to find out, he was actually working as a bouncer at that same strip club. And this is verified from another online source from 2012. Uh, he was a bouncer at that same strip club then. Uh, also, working at that same strip club where the Gemini, you remember them? Oh, man. <laughs> now, yo, you know what's crazy, too? In 04, when I was doing the watch through, I got to the point where they were doing those infomercials with Simon Dean, yes. his vignettes. Yo, those were so legit. Like, they was really on point with it because it really looked like one of them infomercials from back in the day. Like, it took me weeks to realize this was a wrestler that was debuting. Right. Like, they need to bring, like, bring that in the modern day and bring that shit back because that gimmick was on point. That gimmick in modern day would be crazy. It would get so much heat. Right. They need to do that. Oh, man. Uh, Shout out to. Shout out to Bam Neely. Uh, nothing, again, nothing on him since 2021. Uh, but Google searches do show, uh, like, you know, the census Google searches. Yeah. Um, and this is just a reminder. Y'all get look up your name on, on Google and make sure that information out on there. It'd be having your phone number, your address, all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, it'd be tripping. So Google searches for the census shit do show that he's still in Tampa. And uh, somehow his phone number is available. But don't call him. Don't do that. That's weird. Right. Calling random wrestlers who haven't been on TV in 15 years. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to Bam Neely, though. What happened to that boy? Five. What that boy doing now? We want to know. We want to know. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, transition this in to our grades for No Mercy. And uh, we don't got to spend too much time on this. We still got Wrestle Dream and fast lane to cover so uh <laughs> let's just get through this right quick uh no mercy man we got the classic video game intro for the code open and Fire. It made, man made me feel like a 10 year old 11 year old kid again yeah man just like with the with the logo spinning and you got like the the computer uh generated names on the side you got the police yeah. siren man it just it just gave me a bunch of nostalgia. So I love it. I love to see it. Uh, we get the, the first match. Uh, Baron Corbin defeats Braun Breaker. Hits the end of days on him. You know that has a success rate of 99.8%. So mm-hmm. uh, Robert Stone came out there and caused a distraction, though. So uh, we, we may be seeing uh, Von Wagner coming back soon. But uh, as far as this match goes, uh, it, it, it is what it was. I'm going to give it a C grade. I always like seeing Baron Corbin win, so it's a good thing. Yeah, uh, I honestly listen. I can't. We can't go wrong with a with a good old hat, hoss fight. Oh no! And uh, specifically with the two of them, uh, they they started off pretty hot, so you know they 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 made it they made a nice little fight. 
classic went A on this. Like, I was into it. You know what I'm saying? And I, I gave it a C because I'm going to tell you I didn't watch it. That's why I gave it a C. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the end of it. I, I was I was distracted. I was on the way back. So I'm, it's it's a lot of matches I don't have grades for on this show. Yeah. Just tell you that right now. But yeah, I did watch I, it. I, yeah. I was into it. Uh, I didn't expect Corbin to win. That was a nice I mean, little yeah. twist because – you know, you see, you see, Brown. You just expect him to, to barrel this motherfucker over, but mm-hmm. yeah, that, that was that was smart booking. So I, I'll give it a. Yeah, Baron Corbin wins are always a pleasant surprise with me because it, it don't happen much. So shout out to my guy. Thanks. That's a uh, Midwest legend that we talking about right there. <laughs> From one Midwest legend to another. <laughs> shout out to Baron Corbin. Uh, next match uh, for the North American Championship: Trick Williams. Defeats Dirty Dom Mysterio, uh, guest referee Dragon Lee. Dragon Lee been getting them checks this past week, ain't he? Hell yeah. <laughs> Four straight shows that my man's was on. And, uh, I was about to say, he was on Raw at SmackDown in the crowd. Right. Had a match on Raw. Uh, obviously, he was on NXT because that's where he works. And then he was on the crowd on SmackDown because Dom was there. Yeah. And uh, no, Dom was not on SmackDown. Not that I remember. No. No. Well, Dragon Lee was because they had to let folks know who Dragon Lee is. Yeah, they was and, playing uh, his vignette. Facts and Austin Theory <laughs> was like, "Hey, fam, what's good? Let me show this motherfucker vignette during my match." But yeah, anyway, shout out to Dragon Lee and uh, Trick Mellow Gang sit at the top of NXT. Ooh. Let's go. More, more on that, but yeah, Trick Mellow Gang sitting at the top of NXT. Uh, shout out to Trick Williams, man. He's been working his ass off since he got there. Yes, sir. He was always good on the mic, but got even better on the mic, improved in the ring while the, while the mic skills was just doing a thing. Man's uh, he played at South Carolina, didn't he? I think so. That's cool. I always, always get confused out of between him and Lash Legend, which SEC, SEC school they went to. Because they all went to schools with the same exact color scheme. <laughs> I think Lash was at Mississippi State and then Texas A&M. And it might be switched around. And Trick was at South Carolina. It's Googleable. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, this man yeah. is Matt, Matrick Williams yeah. Belton? Met- Metric Belton. Metric. What? In South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was a South Carolina game cock. So so that's some country shit. So it's probably his they probably call him a trick. Yeah, it might be. It is it is a country ass name, so it, yeah. Let me see here. Oh, so yeah, he tried out for the XFL. Sure. Okay. Yeah, he tried out for the XFL, and uh, that that got him a tryout with the WWE, and the rest is history. And history is uh continuing to be made even more. Uh, I'm gonna get this a B grade. A uh, really good match. Dom been putting in work too. Dom has had a fire match with Dragon Lee on Monday, probably his best match on the main roster. Uh, he got an answer to mommy though. Whenever she come back, yeah, she she not happy. She not happy. <laughs> what grade you giving this one? I get that a B plus. Uh, I don't go too crazy. Uh, not not too with, with Dom's matches and stuff like that. He gets better every week. Um, mm-hmm. Having him on damn near every show is helping. But uh, I, I was I was a little surprised. I, I didn't know we was going, you know, take over and like actually go through it with putting it over for Trick. You know what I'm saying? But the reception that he was getting was crazy. That shit was like a concert. Bro. Everybody's yelling, "Whoop that Trick!" I was like, "Oh shit." Hey, bro, I, man, every time Trick Williams come on, I'll be in there like DJ. I'll be. Yeah, man. That shit. <laughs> y'all, y'all know who DJ is, right? Hustle and Flow? I hope so. I'm going to say. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna y'all say, should know. Not not The Rock, but yeah, DJ from Hustle and Flow. I'll nice. be in that book. Like him and Anthony Anderson. Yeah. And that, 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 beat, that beat go right with it, too, so it's perfect. It do. It do. Yeah, shout out to my guy, man. Shout out to him. Uh, yeah, B grade for me, man. Sky's the limit for my dude, man. You, you got a, you got a real legitimate fan in me. Facts for as as long as your career goes for. So, um, I'm 
I can't even express how excited I am <laughs> to continue to watch this this brother's career. Facts, like man. him and Melo, but like Trick Trick especially because like we knew we knew what Melo was about before he got to WWE. Yeah, but like Trick, yeah, man, Trick homegrown. Trick had, yeah, Trick had to blossom a little bit, but once he did, yeah, I can't, crazy I can't right wait. Now. I can't wait. Uh, next match for the NXT Tag Team Championships: the D'Angelo Family defeat the Creed Brothers, Los Lotharios, Angel and Humberto, and uh, Out the Mud, aka the Nagas. <laughs> and y'all know who I was rooting for, uh, but they they took the L. That's my new favorite tag team, man, because they black. They black. They they ganging. I ain't gonna say we're ganging, they ganging, it's, but they ganging. The, the, I like the whole like GTA gimmick. Oh yeah, that's I'm hard that. too. That's that's fire. That's hard too. Shout out to my dude Reggie. <laughs> you know, Reggie was ganging in real life, you know that. <laughs> hey, what was it? Uh in Missouri? Yeah, St. Louis. He's from from North St. Louis. <sighs> I know they were going crazy like that. Man. <laughs> oh man, shit! What what uh what DJ Quick say? Everywhere, just like Compton. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, but this match, man, they you know they they ran the the injury slash comeback trope that they always be doing in wrestling with Tony yeah. B. Yeah, uh, I'm surprised this wasn't a ladder match, man. I, listen, I I always wait for a pause for somebody to come out and say, "Hey, by the way." This match is going to be a ladder match. Right. Come out with the whole stage crew bringing ladders out. Like, I always wait for the pause. But, I oh, I'm glad you brought that up, though. Because uh, I'm going to say this. And Matt Ritter, I hope you're listening. <laughs> uh, much respect to Tony D, the Woo! Don. Because uh, I, I, I didn't I didn't expect that. In fact, when he went out, I thought that they was going to lose the titles. But my man came back in there, thought it was hobbling on one leg. Yeah, I, well, no, nah, I didn't think it was a shoot, but I'm like, if they if they was gonna get him the titles off, then they're gonna do it like an injury angle. But my my man came out there, one legged man, started going crazy, hit some flurries, and he got the winning pinfall. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna give it to him. I'm gonna give it to him. Uh oh, this this one time, one time only. You never gonna. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's you never gonna hear me do it again. But just one time, one time only. I'm gonna give respect where respect is due. He got it today. It's history being made right here, man. It's yeah, man. y'all know that. It's yeah, history. history right there. You understand? <laughs> shout out to my guy, man. Uh, shout out to the Creed brothers. They never disappoint either. Listen, how many times we got to talk about Brutus and uh, Julius? I'm gonna just like, stop talking. I'm gonna just. <laughs> I don't even gonna say much. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna just say their name and the Creed brothers. And they get that look, like you know what it is. Yeah, man. How many times we got to talk about these dudes? And, and I'm I'm getting sold on Brutus even more too, because like I, I was mainly it was Julius, like yo, the dude is that dude. But ah, uh, Brutus getting up there too. Like I need. Yeah, to see, I've like, always been to, a Brutus guy, man. Like we need to just Fat Man Hall of elevate Fame. this up. We got to go ahead and elevate this up. I need to see these guys on the, the main roster real quick. For sure. Uh, also, shout out to Los Lotharios, Angel, and Humberto. When did um, them niggas turn into Thundercats? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm, when did I'm, 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 I'm just glad they found their way back to the light. That's all I'm saying. They was in that dark tunnel for the longest, and they, they made it through. So They was, going, they was going crazy with the dramatization, though. Facts. Like, uh, be great for me. What you giving this one? I give it an A. I, I love, like... When they, I'm changing when they, mine too. I'm gonna give it an A too. Well, when the tag teams be clicking, nobody does tag teams better than NXT. When they're clicking, that shit is just beautiful to watch. For sure, for sure. Uh, we get backstage, man. Trick and Mello uh, embracing the champions. You know, Trick walks in with his North American title. Apparently, Mello wasn't watching the match. He he was you know he was zen and out. You know, meditation is always a priority. Nice. So he he had no idea. He, he right, just, right, right. <laughs> he said he seen he walked in with the belt. He was like, oh. Psh. Laser focus. Facts. I ain't mad at him. And uh, they said they would tear the city up as champions later on. Does he know? Ooh, I don't know, man. I don't think he know. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, uh, 
we get backstage, we transition to another backstage segment. NXT Women's Champion Becky Lynch is uh, gathering materials for her Extreme Rules match in the main event versus Tiffany Stratton. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, she was she was in there shopping. She was, she was oh yeah, I'm gonna take this. I'm yeah, it, it's, it's really funny. Can. It's really funny because she's a mom now, so it's like facts. Like you're just going shopping with your little. <laughs> it was like watching a, a wrestling version of Lois Griffin or something. Right, right. <laughs> Red hair, all that. <laughs> Right. Uh, next up for the Heritage Cup, Noam Dar puts the cup on the line versus Butch. Butch with Tyler Bate as well. Uh, we got uh, Vic Joseph ask Booker T. Booker, why do you gravitate so much to Noam Dar? And Booker T was, you know, giving his man, he, he a star dog. He, nah, he was giving him the politically correct answer. Right. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because it's not just metaphor. It's metaphor the culture. That's why Booker T gravitates to Noam Dar so much. Because Noam Dar always been down with the brown. Noam Talk Dar is one of us. Talk to him. Going against Noam Dar is like rooting against black people. Basically. Or at least that's how I was told it worked with Colorado football. Like... <laughs> No, nah, that, that's true though. That's his whole crew. Everybody yeah, black. They are. You mean Alicia Fox, remember it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's been there. <laughs> Way back. If you know, he you know. He's been there. But uh, it's essentially seven versus two. Uh, because uh, at at a certain point in the last round, Gallus came out. <sighs> jumped the uh, jump Butch and Tyler Bate. So Gallus interferes, cost the uh, Butch the match in the sixth round. That's crazy. Noam Dar wins two to one. Uh, you think we're gonna get a Gallus versus the Brawling Brutes and Tyler Bate at some point? Uh, some point, yeah. We already gonna get uh Butch and Tyler Bate versus them versus two of them. So mm. I mean, that's gonna be Tuesday. So at some point, yeah, Butch gonna go back to his people like, yo, we got a fight, fight for Thanks. real. Shit, bring whenever I heard Seamus, you know, dealing with some lingering injuries and stuff too. So whenever he's healthy, bring him down there back to NXT too. Facts. Have a whole party. I don't think Seamus been to NXT before. I don't know if he's been to like NXT, NXT. Maybe, maybe like 2012, right when NXT first started. I don't. It's Googleable. So just yeah. give me a moment. I'll look it up. Uh, I don't remember if I seen him down there. Let's find out. Cause that would probably be fun. Yeah. Uh I was right. It's, it's, yeah. It's early NXT. He had a couple matches. Uh defeated Luke Harper uh okay. 2013 and defeated Aiden English in 2014. Which is like one of the first uh NXT shows that were on the network back then. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool though. Yeah, he also did some other uh, NXT stuff. Uh, him, so you remember when NXT first first became a thing in 2012, and they were sending like all the big names and stuff down there. Uh, yeah. Sheamus and Alberto Del Rio had a match, uh, a dark match in NXT for the World Heavyweight Title in 2012. Right. So yeah, Sheamus Sheamus been down there a few times. Okay, that's cool. So shout out to Big Shame. It's a couple slappers that I'd watch him, man. Like, Dragon Off would be. Ooh. Come on, man. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Him and Braun? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. We're we doing too much. <laughs> what grade are you giving this one? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to give it an A, man. It was uh, better than I expected it. You know, I'm, I'm not the biggest proponent of, of British rounds, Harris's Cup matches. So. Yeah. They did their thing. No, Noam Dar been cooking since he came back to the States, too. He has. He has, for sure. And, and my, my guy did the Nate Diaz in the middle of this match, too. When he had him in the he had him in the triangle, he was throwing the, throwing the fingers up at him. I was like, oh, shit. But, uh, yeah, no, I give it a B plus. Like, uh, I I was expecting the obvious result, but, you know, Gallus up there don't want to mind any business. I don't appreciate that, but it was they still five minutes, though. They for sure yeah. do not. Yeah, man. Man, this is crazy. 
Uh, after this, we get a video package hyping up NXT deadline on December 9th in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And uh, they also announced Halloween Havoc on October 24th and 20, uh, 31st on USA Network. So Halloween Havoc is also, uh, it's always a good time. Always Hell a good yeah. time. Uh, next up for the NXT championship, uh, it's over. It's over. Damn. Him is him no longer. Ilya Dragunov defeats Carmelo Hayes in the rematch. And uh, at this point, I started watching boxing, so I don't I don't have any comment on this match. Uh, <laughs> I started watching this one before we went on air, and I had to watch them bum ass Patriots, so I didn't really see it all. But shout By out the to way, Ilya they, uh, they they benched Mac as so they should. Got your wish. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shout out to Ilya Dragunov, first to hold both the NXT and NXT UK championships officially, mm-hmm. officially recognized. So, my guy, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. Out here doing this thing. It, it should be a good reign. What, what you feeling about this one? What grade you giving this one? Oh, I, listen, this it's on be on the match of the year candidate list for sure. Like, they they did not play no games about Was it this. better they than a bash match? Oh yeah, definitely better. Okay, definitely better. And the batch match was was solid, but this one was like, they said we gonna put the working boots on. We gonna go crazy with this one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, uh, my guy hit his finisher first from the second rope, and the one that finished it was at the top. So it's like they was gonna create like the the emotion was in it. Like they was really gonna create. Like you just saw it, it dragging off. You just saw a, a a dude that was like descended into madness because it's like, like damn. I'm throwing everything in the kitchen sink at this dude, and he don't want to stay down. Like, so when he finally get the win, it was like, oh shit, okay, it happened. Yeah, man. But yeah, it's definitely on the match of the year list. I give it a plus plus. They killed it. Like, salute okay. to Melo. Uh, Great run. But 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 don't but don't don't make this don't make this too long. Like, I, I know we we might be going somewhere with this, but don't drag this out. Keep it, you know, keep it where it, where it was hot and get him where he needs to be. I don't care if it's wrong, it's SmackDown, wherever. Mm. But let's make it happen, Captain, because you know what time it is. For sure. And uh, shout out to Ilya and Carmelo because uh, they both uh, leading leading my match of the year nominee list with three. Oh, yeah. Three Easy. each. <laughs> so uh, both their two matches. And then uh, I got a Dragon Ball versus Dijak. I finally watched that a few weeks ago. Yo, I. Bro, I'm telling you that yeah. it was going crazy. And then uh, Carmelo Hayes and Wes Lee at NXT Heat Wave. That's on my list too. So they lean. I'm a, I'm gonna need a I'm gonna need to fit fit a couple more Gunther matches on this list though. So I'm gonna have to go nice. run back some Gunther. <laughs> so we gonna see about that. And uh and then in our main event, hold on, hold on. it's time for the main event. Did I do that right? Somebody send that to Mark Henry and let me know. That's, that's all they hired him for. That's crazy. <laughs> it's really all they hired him to do. Hey, hold on. Mark Henry, keep a check nominee. He on there. I got to put him on there now. Facts. But uh, yeah, we 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 got the, the main event. The rematch. Craig, this is the rematch. Yeah, boy, the rematch. Becky Lynch puts the NXT women's title on the line versus Tiffany Epiphany. Tiffany Stratton. Shout out to Bimbo Nation, but the man was too much here mm-hmm. on this evening. She retains her women's title in an Extreme Rules match. Uh, again, I was watching boxing, and I, I looked up every now and again to see Becky was whooping Tiff ass. <laughs> but shout out to Canelo. Uh, not for me losing money, but shout out to you. Uh, mm-hmm. I saw some bogus takes regarding Becky Lynch after this match, though. Oh, and I want to know. Hashtag you niggas. Do y'all watch wrestling to enjoy it or do y'all watch it to it. not even just to critique it? Do y'all watch it to find out what crazy hot takes that you can come up with to spout to your echo chamber on Twitter? I guess so. Like, that's pretty much it. And it'd be the same niggas that be just gassing up everything AEW do. So I'm starting to think it's the latter because you just want to go viral. You want the attention. You were loved by your parents as a child. Something 
of that sort. I agree. Something. That's probably where we at with it. Something. Because this is ridiculous. It, it really is. is. It really I, is. Like, I had... I saw something very specific in it. And, and by the way, we, we, we said this I was before, saying Tiff like, carried Becky. I saw that a lot. Wow. All right. <laughs> I'm just I'm just not even gonna touch that one. I'm really not. Y'all stupid as shit. Anyway, yeah. uh yeah, no, I we said this before that potential main eventer it is it, it's set now. I, I have no questions about it. Tiff gonna main event potential probably gonna main event media one day. Cause sure. it's certain people it's certain people that like when they're when they're coming up, when they still haven't hit it yet, and they face against a megastar. And certain people that rise up to that occasion, and certain people don't. She did not look out of place with Becky whatsoever. Mm-mm. Like she went in there looking every bit her equal. And I, I, I use this analogy because that's honestly what I felt. I wrote it down. I said Becky had her Mick Foley, Mick Foley moment because it used to be when the guys was coming up and like they like they on the cusp, but they're not quite over the hill yet or over the hump as a star. What they do? They had that match with Mick Foley. Triple H did it, Randy Orton did it, Edge yeah. did it. They went to the stratosphere. This was that moment for Tiff because she was already there. She won the championship. She wanted to, she wanted to, those faces in NXT. But then you had Becky come in, and that's what I was thinking. Like if this if this was going to main event that Tiff would win, but even in a loss, still like again, she looked every bit the part. Like she was a perfect foil for Becky in this. So it's like they went in there and they put on this banger. And now, win, lose, or draw, she comes out of it looking bigger than ever now. So Tiff is it, even in this loss. Like, you could call her up after this, honestly, if you want to. They might not, but you honestly could. So I gave this A-plus easily. Like, they did that shit. And mind you, she only been wrestling about two years. And uh, within those two years, she she was gone Tore ACL, something of that sort. Mm-hmm. Just take that into consideration. It is really just let you know what we're working with. This, this is why we have a PC that y'all say don't work. Mm. That that say is is, is stupid. Is it doesn't make sense. You don't need a PC, but this is what the PC does, y'all. Just saying. I just saw the score. My bad. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's not looking good, bro. It's not looking good. It's not not looking. Man, the Cowboys might win it all, bro. Nah, we're not gonna put that evil into the world. You're not gonna do this. No, no, we're not gonna do this. Oh no, man. Because I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna deal with that shit. No, I mean, Cowboy no. fans, I'm not dealing with that. Hell, nah, there's no more social media for me if that happens. <laughs> I'm telling you. No, I dealt with it when from Philly won, but Dallas win? No, yeah, the, yeah the, the Philly one was bad enough. Right. <laughs> and that came at the expense of my team. Like, I'm going off the grid if Dallas do some shit. No, we can't have that. We got we to do a prayer circle. Uh, <laughs> let's right. talk about Russell Dream. I uh, think, think that just zero hour just kicked off here. Uh, we're not going to yeah. talk about zero hour matches. Uh, without the zero hour matches, it's still 10 matches on the card. Still too many matches. God. Uh but let's just let's just I'm gonna just say the, the matches and you give me a winner, I give a winner, we move on instead of really elaborating because I think we sp- yeah. spent too much time on NXT. So yeah, uh, we did. <laughs> Ricky Starks and Willer Yuta, who you got? Uh, who cares, Ricky? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fucking names in this. Jesus. Uh, Lord. A four way match for a future tag team championship opportunity so they don't even say number one contenders but that's stupid yeah uh the young bucks the kookamonga crackers uh the <laughs> guns the lucha brothers and orange cassidy and hook i'm here to tell you right now we don't care let me tell you <laughs> right. i'm just gonna say lucha brothers just for the sake of it because that's the team on there that I only care about. The only yeah. team on there I care about. I mean, just for the memes, Orange Cassidy and Hook for me. Y'all don't care enough. They 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 probably will win too. That's yeah. the funny shit. Yeah, they should. 
uh, TBS Championship, Chris Statlander puts the title on the line versus Julia Hart. I'm right. here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell you. <laughs> but yeah, Chris Statlander. <laughs> Julia just, Hart just... apparently is undefeated for uh, the last year and a half. That's cool. Uh, it don't matter right now. <laughs> it, don't. it really don't. Yeah, I think we both going with Chris. Yeah. Uh, this one should be pretty decent though. Eddie Kingston versus uh, Kasuyori Shibata for both oh. uh, Eddie Kingston's Ring of Honor World Titles and New Japan Strong Open Weight Championships. Who you got in this one? Oh, uh, actually, I'm gonna say Shibata initially. Really? I was gonna say Eddie, but did Eddie, Eddie like? A little like he hurt or something like that. That was his. That was his reasoning he gave for uh, not fulfilling his indie dates. Yeah, I don't know. Was wrestlers fulfill your fucking indie dates, bro? Come on now. <laughs> like that. Listen, that that's one of the reasons why y'all go over there because so, so y'all can do them. Right. So it's like even Vince McMahon and- let people finish their indie dates, bro. Come on. Right. Like you got him, so why not go to him? Like right. it's real simple. Yeah, no, I'm gonna take your body. I, I got I got Eddie Kingston winning it. Y'all made a big deal about him winning that Ring of Honor championship. Like, oh, he won a world championship for the first time. That shit don't count. But if y'all gonna make a big deal out of it, he better retain. So facts. Uh next oh, up. We'll see. Yeah. Uh next up, <sighs> Lord. We got a six man tag team matchup. Uh, Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega, and Kota Ibushi versus uh, I, I I still to this day don't know how to pronounce this young man's name. Uh, Takashida. Takashida. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sammy Guevara and Will Ospreay. I'm not gonna play the soundbite again, but who you got? I really don't care. Um, I don't know. Give me the the. The, the Jericho Society, or whatever they call themselves these days. Uh, Chris, yeah, Chris Jericho and then uh, Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi. That's that's pretty much what I expect. Yeah, because they because because they've been they've been taking L's lately. So yeah, uh, we'll just flip the flip the script. Yeah, so I got. Uh, next up, uh, since Adam Cole's hurt, this is uh now a handicap match for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. Uh, AEW World Champion MJF is all alone, and maybe maybe he'll have a partner, maybe he won't. But uh, he's facing uh, the righteous uh, Vincent and Dutch. Who are these niggas? I see. I saw the um a vignette or whatever, and I'm thinking like, yo, so this is AEW's Joe Joe Gacy, because mm. like that's the vibe I was getting. Some weirdos. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess they're gonna win. I, I don't see MJF. He ain't like that. That damn bad. He ain't gonna beat both these motherfuckers. So, you know, instead of them relinquishing it, he's trying to go out like a genius. I guess he just you know. I'm with it. Just, that's cool. You know, I'm with it. Yeah, go out, go out like go out like Denzel on training day. Do Facts. Think, go out like Cleo and set it off. <laughs> right. Day after day. Y'all know that. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. Hey, do do I be saying too much real shit for y'all sometimes? Because <laughs> y'all should Listen, know what set it off is. Now. I'm about to say. I'm about to say like I don't. If he do, I don't care. Deal with it. <laughs> right. didn't tap it. By now, you don't tap into this show to 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 get babied around here. Facts. Tell us he like it is. Goddamn it, like <laughs> Ti is <laughs> big facts. Uh, next up, Hangman Adam Page versus uh Swerve Strickland. Who you got in this? Whoo, this this the reason, main reason I'm typing into the show. Uh I need Swerve to win. I need I need to see Swerve yeah. win. It ain't cause it, it ain't cause the obvious. But like, in Seattle. Well that and it's just like What's the obvious? I need I need, I, need so your, I don't think we're on the same page when it comes to the obvious. Nah, nah. Yeah, we not on the same page. <laughs> well, that I mean, shit don't, don't matter when it comes to him no I'm more. About, I'm about to say it don't matter to him. So it don't matter that much to me. That's why I'm saying, like, it ain't cause of that. Right. But no, nah, like I just, I don't know, man. Like, it feels like one of those scenarios where it's like you gotta, you gotta give this dude a solid win. Cause what, who was Swerve really beating since he's been to AEW like that? Like, what, what's, what's the signature win that he could put on his resume? Like, 
and I don't think they would build it like this to where it's like basically the co-main event if they wasn't gonna do something here. Yeah. So, like, I think this is this is gonna be like a not a coming out party because he is at least established, but like it's 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 a it's a moment for him to get a big moment. Yeah, I feel like you can't have him cut that promo. You know, talking about you know the rare time that he recognizes he's a black wrestler uh, <laughs> versus Hangman Page and not give him the win. Plus, he at the crib. Yeah. So, yeah, you got to do that. Like, like uh, don't don't try to be woke and conscious now. But he was <laughs> he was spitting venom. Like he I was. give him that. Like that line aside, he was getting in that boy ass. So I'm like, yo. If you're going to talk this shit, you yeah. got to get a W. I'm sorry. Yeah. Shout out to the Black Wrestling Podcast. Shout out Thanks. to them. Uh Tag Team Championships, FTR versus Aussie Open. Who you got winning this one? Oh, God. I, I know you said you ain't hitting the button no more. But, oh, man. I'm uh, here to tell you just... right now. We don't care. <laughs> Let me tell you. Right. Yeah. Uh, just, just, just give me an FTR. Yeah. Uh, I, FTR, especially if like you 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 said like you got the Lucha Brothers winning right. that match, so yeah, man. Like I don't I don't I don't see Aussie Open taking no titles off of anybody. Nah, at least not right now. Maybe the Ring of yeah. Honor title, but shit. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, next up we got uh Brian Danielson versus Zack Saber Jr. Yeah, yeah, which may main, main event. I'm and thinking I feel this. I I can't. I can't. Similar see. to uh, to the other match, you got to give it to the hometown guy. I think this is the the first big show they've had in Seattle since Daniel Bryan. Brian Danielson, excuse me, slave name. Uh, Brian Danielson <laughs> has been there. Yeah. So yeah, it, it it should be like if he if he doesn't want to main event, that's one thing. But if if there's nothing else, I can't see anything else going on last realistically but uh yeah I, this one is tough i don't know because i i didn't expect brian to beat okada yeah. and that that was like oh shit and that's when he broke his arm in that match so it was like you could have called an audible if you wanted to but oh man uh i don't know i i i'll go with that I'm gonna go with Brian. I was like, it'll it'll probably ruin the end of the show if they come on last if that happened. But I don't know. I'm 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 going uh, I'm going with the fifty fifty booking. (laughs) Let's get it. And this is the one that I've seen them say is going main event. So that's why I don't know for sure. But uh, Christian Cage, TNT champion, the official TNT champion now. (laughs) He he actually has it now. (laughs) Uh, Puts the belt on the line versus Darby Allen. Two out of three falls. Who you got? Oh, man. I'm going to say Christian retains. Same. Mainly because I don't want to see Darby win a championship. I don't want to see Darby at all. Uh, But, you know, if it does main event and Christian wins, then I guess we know what's going to happen next. (laughs) And I hate to see that. Maybe it happens. Maybe it don't. Yeah. I just... Listen, I know I know you're a wrestler and you've been wrestling 30 years. Yeah. And that's what you do is is you work, you work mm-hmm. the marks. And you don't 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 work the marks like this. Like be honest with us, man. Yeah, because I'm just like <laughs> I, I don't, don't say that, oh man, my body's beat up. And then Right. And that's that's my thing. Like, am I am I ever gonna object to seeing watching Ed Russell? Hell no. Oh no. But it's it's y'all. That's the only reason I don't want to see him go anywhere near there. I don't like to see you niggas happy. Be. Exactly. The way y'all are going to be. <laughs> it's bad as that sounds. Yeah, insufferable like, for like weeks you. on end. Yeah. I don't want right. that. Like, do what makes you happy. But just don't don't, don't feed my misery. Just don't do that. Yeah. I I concur. I concur. And uh, let's, let's just get into Fast Lane real quick. There's only four matches announced for this one. Um, I mean, definitely gonna be some matches added, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, first prediction we got the Latino World Order. Uh, either uh, it's a uh, Rey Mysterio, Santos Escobar, and I'm just gonna go out on a on a limb and say it's gonna be Joaquin Wild. 
versus uh Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, aka the Nagas. Yes, sir. Who you got winning this one? Uh it's gotta be the niggas. Yeah. That's, mainly that's my because pick. mainly because I think this is where they're officially it heels now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think this is gonna be where it happens. That thing we was already talking about. Mm-hmm. I think I think if it wasn't triggered already, it was triggered in that, that title match on Friday. Like Yes. I see, you see, finally, you've seen his face. You've seen his face. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it's it's gonna happen. So Raymond, just a heads up. You, you've been in a setup before, so mm-hmm. you're not picking up on the contact clue. So this is your final warning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is going up tomorrow. So you got time. Yeah, you, you gotta you need to watch you need to watch it back to set this weekend, next weekend. Facts. Um when is this show? Is it Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Okay. So you'll have about five days to prepare. Yeah. In fact, you you've had more than five days. You've had weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you've had months. You've had months. Like you've 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 done this before. Absolutely. You've been here before. So act like it, please. For sure. Uh, next up for the women's championship, EO Sky puts the belt on the line versus Asuka and Charlotte Flair. It was initially supposed to be Asuka, and then Bailey volunteered Charlotte to be added to the match for whatever reason. <laughs> Triggering people. Or wait, it was supposed to be EO and Charlotte, and then she volunteered Asuka. It was one of them. Uh-oh. I think, I think, yeah, I think it was going to be... It's gonna be EO and Charlotte because she won that. Yeah, because Oscar came out there speaking in Japanese and then Bailey yeah. responded and then EO's like, that's not what she said. Yeah. <laughs> EO's like, bitch, what's wrong with you, bro? Yeah, no, nah, she need to whoop Bailey ass after this. Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Nah, hey, I, we, I, we a... finally getting past this hellhole too of of them being each other's lackeys. I don't like that. I've never liked it. Right. That's that's why like I, I'm I, I I was glad when EO won Money in the Bank because we don't have to go through this whole oh I'm above all of y'all so y'all got to do you know go through me first nah we're not doing that yeah you got nah, I got I got I got EO winning oh uh, it's probably gonna be dope you know right. if if it's if it's probably a triple player as a challenger and triple threats though oh shit that's true but see I, oh or did the street get broken last month it definitely did it definitely did because technically yeah. Bianca won that match first. Yes, he did. But uh, now nah, I need I, I need to see EO hold it for a little while. Like we 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 don't need to do this. Oh, Charlotte's back for a while, so we can transfer it. Over. No, no, we don't need to do that shit. Like, please, no. I think actually, yeah, yeah. She she can she can sneak out a win here. Like the match is gonna be fire when you have a triple threat with these two or these three. Mm-hmm. You expect it to be dope, but she can sneak out a win because I think. Ultimately, we're going to lead to Bailey versus EO at some point. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to just put this out there. I ain't going to elaborate too much on it, but I, I've seen some rumors involving Charlotte Flair uh, about, a, about a month or two ago. And uh, I'm starting to believe said rumors because like she's she been back wrestling. She's been real motivated in the ring again for regular yeah. matches. So, Oh, yeah, th- those rumors. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was I was doing my research on it a little bit, and I was like, mm, maybe, maybe. But she coming to work on Friday nights on free TV, putting in work. Yeah, yeah. Cause she was seeing some she thirst was, traps on the gram too. Right, you're right. <laughs> Cause she was taking a lot of time off, and you know, just enjoying enjoying life. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, okay, she back to work. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Cause you know how that be. It's like you had the people at work that you know you might not like them so much, but you know they just they just come in and they just put putting their work all the time. When they go right. away, it's like, whoo, Lord Jesus, thank you. We got a break, and then then they come back, and you know something happened, so they just uh-huh. running the scores up on it. I'm like, oh my god, that's where we at right now. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, Katie, you gonna you you're gonna suffer for a little bit. It's looking it that is what way. It is. It is what it is. <laughs> we both got EO, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And uh all right, let me get my sounds ready for this one. Yeah. The GOAT. The GOAT John Cena. AKA ain't no AKA. He's just the GOAT.
He found him a partner. Yeah. Who was partner? Yeah. 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 L.A. Knight. And uh, I think we all knew it was either going to be L.A. Knight or Cody. I just mm-hmm. didn't see how they got Cody over there. I mean, I know there's an obvious angle to take with Cody. They just haven't taken that angle yet for some reason. Uh, but yeah, John Cena, L.A. Knight versus the Bloodline. Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa. And uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to what was it SummerSlam? And I came on yeah. this this I came on this show the day after SummerSlam. I was upset. And I said, "Yo, y'all, y'all ruined something I've enjoyed for the last three years." But mm-hmm. I, I think they found a way to salvage it a little bit. Yeah, because uh, Jimmy Uso was becoming exactly who he said he tried to prevent Jay Uso from becoming. Right. He over there. He think he the tribal chief. He didn't even earn it. Like Roman was at least about to let Jay earn the tribal chief, but not Jimmy walking around like he Pac. Yeah, y'all here slowly handing his hand over for the microphone to Paul Heyman, right. and Roman. Like Who get hell? your ass out of here. Uh, Who do you think you are? Yeah, they're gonna let this go on for about three weeks, and mind you. I didn't bring this up in rumors, but we have a Roman Reigns sighting coming in about two weeks. Uh-oh. So uh, all this all this crazy, all this running wild like you run the show shit going to stop <laughs> before the month is over. Because <laughs> he got, he got, he's scheduled for, uh, was it Crown Jewel next month? Mm-hmm. Or not? Yeah, next month. So yeah, they're going to they gonna use that time to, to build it up. So Jimmy got about two more weeks of this bullshit before, <laughs> before it's time to go. So I'm, um- this isn't properly labeled, so I'm just I'm gonna just throw a hail mary on this joke right here. Uh, <laughs> you think Roman gonna come back with this type of energy on Jimmy? You's a fucking nut, nigga. <laughs> he should. He absolutely should. Especially because you know they're gonna lose. So yeah, yeah, I, I, I that that would be appropriate. That wasn't the one I thought I was about to play. Uh, In fact, hold on. His his appearance is the 13th. That's going to be the week after the show. Oh, yes, you're right. Yeah, because this Friday is the 6th. Oh, yeah. So when they take this L, he going to have to come home. The tri- tribal chief going to be like, yo, y'all had a PLE. Y'all main evented. Bloodline was on the, the main event of the show. Y'all lost. Hmm fuck happened Mm-mm-mm. we gonna find out yeah, oh, yeah. about to get a whooping next week oh yeah so, <laughs> it's, just, it's about to be bad yeah, we know john cena and la night winning that's our prediction oh yeah hell yeah yeah, yeah so it's gonna be a good one that's the main event too Back. it's john cena not a main event mm-hmm. uh and oh. then uh unless that doesn't main event this will seth freaking rollins please say the freaking Versus Shinsuke Nakamura, last man standing for the World Heavyweight Championship. Is is, is it time? Oh, I I can't see them, and and this is like this ain't even like because of what I want, but I can't see them building Shinsuke up like this. Okay, he lost the first match, but I can't see him doing it twice in a row. Like, yeah. I mean, it just it wouldn't make sense to me. And now you got a stipulation because you got an out. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like you you got you got your way to make this happen without Seth taking too much of a hit. Like it it, it just it's seamless. If this don't main event, then then we know it, it's gonna yeah. happen. Usually, like if it, if it'll go main event, then it's like okay, well Seth gonna retain. Yeah, but if That's this, if this doesn't. Yeah, if this doesn't close the show, it's happening. Cause that's what happened with Melo. It they didn't main event. Mm-hmm. There you go. So it, it, it kind of depends. I, I I'm thinking she's going to win. Yeah, I got Shan. I got Shan winning too. Yes. Yeah. Just, just off that alone, I think it's time. I don't know who he'd go up against, but we'll see. That's that's something you can. Like figure out afterwards, but like Seth, Seth, if Seth needs to take time off for real, like do it, bro. Then use that time. I mean, you could you could sit it out through November. 
honestly. Yeah. So you can set it out through the rest of the year, honestly, if you want. Yeah. Here, you know, what, what nobody, listen, he was busting his ass. With your daughter. He been busting his ass realistically for the past four, four and a half years straight. Yeah. This was this was through his marriage, through his daughter being born. Through his honeymoon. Yeah, all of that. <laughs> all that. So go there, you know, heal up, you know, spend some time at home with, with your daughter. You know, maybe pop in at your school a little bit more, pop in at yeah. your coffee shop a little bit more. Like Gosh. I'm all for it. Come back for the rumble. That's that's the time. So it's it's about that time. So I can see them them going that route. Uh mm-hmm. with that being said, uh what matches uh do you see being added? Uh I definitely see uh Judgment Day versus Cody and Jay Uso for the tag titles possibly being added. Yeah, something like that. Because I don't think you leave Cody Rose off of this show. You don't leave Jay Uso or the Judgment Day off of this show. These these are literally outside of Roman, your top talent on the male yeah. side, so you, you can't leave them off. Uh, yeah. Leftover lasagna. Where does he fit in? At? Ooh, that's a good question. You you run Maybe. him and Kofi back? I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Cause I feel like they they like to the inch it towards the turning him heel again thing, but we haven't quite got to that point yet. Oh, they ain't even inching. They they switch. They just coming down a long highway right now. You you see them coming. It's just a matter of time yeah. for when they get here. Yeah, we just we just ain't hit the, the the kill switch on it yet. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if we're gonna see Drew, but uh, I think Rhea's gonna be back by this time. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, not I'm not thinking Nia yet, but you know she she's there. Hmm. But uh, yeah, no, Rhea definitely probably facing somebody when it comes up. I can see them giving Nia a squash match against somebody on here. Maybe her and yeah. Zoe is one yeah. of them. Like, oh y'all, if y'all gotta go pee or something, go ahead. Because <laughs> the rest of these matches is fire right now. So yeah, especially yeah, if you it's... add the tag titles, there's gonna be a bunch of stuff people don't want to miss necessarily. So you got to have that that match for people to, you know, take a breather. People want to watch it. They can watch it. But yeah. Like it, it'll either be her her and Zoe or her and Raquel since she cost her the title yeah. in that last match. So that that's something you could put on there. Yeah, give them about five minutes to go do their thing. Yeah. That's what I did for uh, who Charlotte faced at SummerSlam. Well, this, this year? 2021. When we went, uh, twenty twenty one was it? oh we Nikki. was there. It was Nikki and Rhea. Yeah, I I, I went to the bathroom, bro. <laughs> when Charlotte Charlotte match, I went to the bathroom, man. It was it was after Bianca <laughs> lost too, so I had to go. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to go. <laughs> yeah, that was that was in the that was in the the streak. The streak kept living. Oh wait, no. I'm thinking, well, I'm, I'm thinking money in the bank. It was one of them. It was one of them. I, yeah. I had to go. I had to go to the bank. When it was money in the bank was Natty. Was it Charlotte? Charlotte and Rhea. Money in the bank. I, or it was Natty and Rhonda that I went to the bathroom. Natty yeah. Rhonda. Last year in I Vegas. Forget, I forget. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then okay. Rhonda got cashed in on by Liv. I came back in time for that. Why the fuck would y'all ever do that? Natty and fucking Rondo. I, I knew what match I was going to the bathroom on before the show, though. Like, that's just bad. That's bad booking. Hey. I'm, like, I'm going to just, I'm going to just chalk that up to, to, to Vince booking because this was just before he, he stepped down. Yeah. That's some sorry hey, shit. But Triple H gave us three Tegan Knox segments in the first hour of Raw. First half hour. <laughs> hey, look, look, look. You gave us three Tegan Knox segments. Tommaso Champa. And I fucks with Champa, but I mean, yeah, yeah. it is what it is. Like, motherfuckers don't care about him for real. And then Bronson Reed. You gave us a Bronson Reed match. All in the first half hour of Raw. 
against Monday Night Football. Do you want people to watch this show or not? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, as long as Wade Barrett is on commentary, I will watch every Bronson Reed match. Cause he be doing that 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 tsunami shit. Like I get hyped for that. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like the way he called that. Cause you say he say that shit with his whole chest. Like right, that shit gives Wade. me hype. Cause Wade shout is a real Wade. one. Yeah. Facts. Bronson Reed just went around calling himself thick. And I, I haven't been a fan <laughs> since. <laughs> Yo, y'all, y'all never gonna let him leave. I'm not. One. I'm not. I refuse. He don't to. even this do man, it no more. <laughs> he don't. But the fact is, it wasn't just he was calling himself thick. This man walked out with a singlet that had thick across it. Like, come on, son. <laughs> Good man. You, I, it, it was hard being a fan of bro for real. Oh, it was crazy. Man. I was, I was there when he debuted in Impact, and I just was like, oh. oh but he was cold in Impact. I ain't even gonna lie. Impact, yeah. New Japan, he was cold. I just, mm-hmm. like, man, this man used to call himself Thick. Thick boy. <laughs> thick boy with an I. <laughs> thick with two C's, boy with an I. <laughs> Man's was, man, listen. Maybe, you, look, may, may, maybe that was his wife's idea, you know? Maybe it wasn't his. I don't know. Maybe it's like, yo, you're not gonna go on TV and say this and like, all right, all right watch me do it. And then that's what happened. Now, if I come to Maybe. find out he lost a bet to somebody. Yeah. That's he what did, like, He was getting ribbed for, and they was like, yo, you got to get ribbed for about a year and call yourself thick boy. Then I'll, 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 I'll ease up a little bit, but like, I feel like that's what it is. Honestly. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, let's plug our socials in, in, and forget oh, about man. the era of thick boy. <laughs> Facts. Thick boy uh, y'all era. Can find me. <laughs> y'all can find me at Rick Havoc on and Instagram and on Twitter. Hey, y'all can check out all Rick my Havoc past episodes. Bro. Yeah. Oh, shit. Did I fuck that up? Yeah, you did. Y'all can f- <laughs> rewind. Y'all can find me at Rick Havoc 24 on Instagram and on Twitter. Also, y'all can go check out all the past episodes of the Havoc Hour where I talk sports and entertainment on all streaming platforms where you find Young Kings Wrestling, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Spotify, and the video version which the most entertainment is up on YouTube. I'm going to just uh, let you know right now, bro, we we a fourth of the way through the NFL season and we ain't had no episodes out yet. I got you. <laughs> I got you. It's, it's, I'm about, honestly, I'm about to just say fuck it. And if I got to do it myself, then whatever. But I'll, uh, I'll shoot, some, I'll, I'll shoot some DMs out. Cause I do, it's, it is plenty of shit that I, cause Dame just got traded. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Basketball about to start. Like camp start tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I seen Drew Holiday got traded to the ops. What? Yeah, yeah. You see that? Oh yeah, yeah. Because that's just what he said. Oh, I, I thought he was somewhere else. I, I know he not he not staying there, is he? Where in Portland? Yeah. No, he's not in Portland no more. Oh, he got shit. traded to the ops. Oh, they, Boston got him. Yeah, yeah. That's, right, that's right. Oh shit. Don't move me. It don't move. <laughs> it don't move me. I mean, hopefully not. And they ain't be in Milwaukee, so it don't matter to me. Like if they if they if they know what they're doing, but it's Boston, so I oh. don't fuck. Hey, I'm the best being TC Fontaine. You can follow me on Instagram, TC.fontaine. Follow my photography, F O Y dot flicks. I Man, something about photography, it just make you feel good. Like, when you get a really good shot, but, like, when you get a really good shot of, a like, a subject that's like, yo, this hard. And I could have got a better shot, you know? Mm-hmm. I got, I got, I added Canelo Alvarez to my portfolio this past week, so I, I'm feeling real good. <laughs> I'm hey. feeling real good. First Talk person you see on my boxing portfolio is Canelo. Talk to him. And I was like, man, it, this, I bet this is how Malik felt first time he got Floyd in his portfolio. <laughs> but this is how I felt for Malik the first time I seen he took a picture of Floyd. I was like, oh, he got a picture of Floyd. Right. That's hey, how I feel. Just, just so y'all know, that means the price is going up. Oh, yeah. Price. Listen, <laughs> hold up. You know what I'm about just to Just so y'all know, price hey. getting ready to go up. God damn it. Yesterday's oh. price is not today's price. Facts. 
because I can't sell myself on pictures of myself that I took. But shit, you see Canelo on my portfolio? God damn right. And, and I got Charlo on there. He pretty famous. Mm-hmm. And I got Devin Haney on there. He pretty famous. I got, say, yeah. I got three undisputed champions in my portfolio. I was about to say, you think, Come you on, think scrubs? Now. These niggas that can fight. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I need some more though. This is my wish list, man. Floyd, Bud. It's just boxing. Uh mm-hmm. Quote, gotta get her. Oh, facts. Uh Alicia, gotta get her. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. I gotta I gotta get all them. I gotta get all them. So I, I can't wait. I'm trying to get out here, man. Facts. Y'all need to y'all need to start letting me get access to these events so I can take these pictures, bro. <clears throat> y'all be turning down. We know some people. We do, but <laughs> But the thing is, like, he the one that told me who I need to contact years ago. So I'll be contacting them every fight, and they turn me down every fight. That's great. Every fight. So, yeah, man, uh, we, we've been nearing about two hours here. So I do appreciate y'all for listening. And uh, you know what we do every time the show's over with. We, we give y'all a little vocalism. So I'm going to pass this over. Yeah. <laughs> Said I'll be back to hold you down. I don't wanna leave you, baby, dee, baby, dee. But we gotta go right now. We'll be back next week with another another one. one. Maybe if if I don't go to the Aces game, but if I don't, I'll be here. If I do, then I don't know. We'll figure it out. But we out of here. Go, yes, sir. <laughs>